2020 and global lockdowns were an extremely rough time for musicians, not only professional touring musicians that rely on the finances of being on the road, but even those of us that just use music as an escape from our daily lives. Many people now filled their idle time with social media, Netflix, and other online services. I myself took up a lot of new video games and maybe that's something you can identify with. If so, let me know down in the comments what you guys did to stay sane. It would have been nice as a musician to have the luxury of being able to conference call a band practice, but the reason that's not really a possibility is latency. Latency is the delay between the time a sound is made and the time a sound is heard, and in this context, if you were in a Zoom call with your drummer, there would not only be a delay on your end as the guitar player from what the drummer is playing, but also when the drummer hears your mega chug power chords back on their end, making keeping time near impossible. The solution here would be to have the drummer play to a click track and have everyone else practice to the drummer on their own without the luxury of being able to hear the other members, but that's less like a band practice. It's kind of like a hot mess. This is where the Elk Live comes in with the promise of reducing audio latency enough to be able to play in sync with the other members in your band. All you need is one of these fancy yellow audio interfaces, a stable internet connection you can plug a LAN cable into, and the computer for accessing the website that hosts the jam session. When I heard that this product existed, I was very excited. I'm always super curious of the new technology and how it can benefit not only myself, but all of you as musicians and how this can help us bring our songs to life. So let's jump in and take a look at the Elk Live and then I'll share my experience with you and let you know if this is going to be a fit for your particular situation. Let's hook it up. Okay, I have Google Chrome loaded up here. And the reason that I'm using Google Chrome is because that is the preferred browser for the Elk Live. So I did try using it in Safari and while it technically works, Elk Live does recommend that you use Chrome. I have the Elk Live website loaded up and right away it's gonna try to connect to my Elk Live bridge and it's telling me that uh, my bridge is already in use. We're just gonna take that over. And then there we go, connected super quick. Now here is the backstage tab. This is where you kind of have all of your organization. You can see your different friends here. I don't have anyone online, but I'm just going to show you uh, the different features. And then I'll show you some bits and pieces of sessions that I've had along the way. But this is where you can add people, um, you know, by using their email. Uh, you can go to your account settings here. You can go over to the community tab. They have a Discord that is pretty active. Basically, this is your main hub for the Elk Live. We have the video tab up here, so if I open this up and I click my video, hey, you can see my webcam, it is right there. One important thing here to know about the talkback and the camera is this is going to be whatever your device is set to. So like, let's say I'm using the Elk Live and I have my quad cortex running into the Elk Live. The talkback will actually be through uh, whatever you have set up here in your settings. So if we open this little cog here, um, you can see we have some options for the video, uh, the video source. I have it set to my camera that's on my iMac here. And then we have a default audio source. And so if I have this set to my iMac microphone, when I press the talkback, the built-in microphone in the iMac is going to be what I talk through. And that's what I'm gonna hear the talk back through as well is the speakers on the iMac, not my studio monitors. Now, originally I did have some issues with the talkback. Uh, when I clicked the button, my drummer couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear him when he was talking back to me. And what seemed to fix those problems was actually using the Chrome browser and changing those DNS settings. That can all be found on their tutorials. They have a very, very comprehensive tutorial section on their website. If you are technologically impaired like me, uh, it was pretty easy to follow along with, so no worries on that. Um, we do have some advanced settings here that you can go into, uh, audio compensation, video sync, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really using that. And then you do have this ringtone option. You can turn this off. I did find a glitch, I think, with the ringtone. Um, occasionally when I was trying to do a session with both myself, my vocalist, and my drummer. For whatever reason, the ringtone would get stuck even though that I had this checkbox off. But I just refreshed the browser and it went away. Uh, we also have a chat over here. You know, if you wanna chat and not use the talkback feature, you can do that. Uh, let's go into the mixer here. Um, we have the master volume slider over here on the right. And then we have our inputs over here. If you click on this, you can see the different inputs. Uh, you have different options, line, guitar, mic, USB. Um, we're gonna go guitar on this one. And you can see my guitar on the right channel there. Now we have some other options here as well. Maybe that's too loud. We could go line in if we need to. Uh, we do have phantom power with this thing. So if you're using a condenser microphone or something like that, you need phantom power with, you do have that option here if you select the microphone option. 
Uh, we can also, if we go line on both of these things, we can stereo link them. So those are our inputs. And then over here on the right, we have our mixers. And you will have faders for every different participant that you have in your jam session. So uh, right here, you have my left and my right faders. Like, let's say that I had a click track or something on the left side. I could pan this left and I could pan my guitar right and I could adjust the click track as I wanted. Now this is just going to affect your mix coming in. Everyone has their own mixing console and they can adjust their own levels appropriately, which is really, really handy, you know, especially if your drummer is playing to a click or something like that and you don't want to hear the click, you can turn the click off on your end and the drummer can still have it. That's really nice. And that pretty much covers all the bases and gets you ready for your session. So to start a session, you would just go here to your backstage area. You'd find your friend that's online and you would click start a new session. Since I don't have any friends online, very sad for me. <laughs> I can't start a new session right now, but let me show you a session that I did with my drummer previously. So how do I feel about my experience with the Elk Live? I need to preface what I'm gonna say with this. I'm not very good with technology. I can usually figure things out, but after 30 minutes of angry white knuckled Google searches. That being said, I found the Elk Live to be fairly easy to use. The user interface is pretty simple to navigate and understand, and I think most people, especially those more adept to technology than myself, will probably not have any issues getting up and running. The sound quality is mostly fantastic, and I will go into that caveat in a second here. And even though the routing is somewhat limited with only two inputs, I feel like it is more than sufficient for most people. I also really just like the aesthetic of the unit itself with its sleek, compact design. And with the help of a patch bay, I actually have it sitting behind my desk like I would with any other router or piece of Wi-Fi equipment. However, I did have some issues that I want to address. I would liken the experience of connecting with another bandmate to playing video games online. Yeah. So, uh... Huh. try restarting my video. There it is. Hey. Occasionally, it can be very difficult to get a party together and you are going to be at the mercy of the slowest internet connection among your group. Not that this can be held against the Elk Live, but it is important to mention before you start diving into something like this and investing what could be over $1,000 per band. You should probably do your due diligence and make sure everyone has decent internet speeds prior. Also, much like online gaming, sometimes the experience can be a bit buggy. You may find yourself unable to connect for some inexplicable reason or just have an infinite loop of the jam in invitation song that you can't seem to turn off. I turn the ringtone off. Why is this thing? Uh. In my experience, usually a quick reset of the browser and a power cycle of the unit cleared these problems up. Back to the audio quality, you will probably get the occasional artifacting in the audio as well, but I found this pretty minimal and it didn't detract from the experience. And again, if you're familiar with online gaming, this is kind of par for the course. There's also a limitation on how far you can be from the host of your jam session. It is listed on the Elk Live website as 620 miles or a thousand kilometers, whichever applies to you, which is pretty reasonable. But if you live in Portland, Oregon, and you're trying to jam with someone from Sweden, probably not going to work. <clears throat> But the big thing that I really want to get across if you are looking at one of these is can it replace your in-person jam sessions? It sort of depends. Much in the same way a Zoom meeting is not the same as a meeting in an office conference room, having a band practice online certainly does not feel the same as a band practice in person. Each have their pros and cons, and when it comes to the Elk Live, those pros would be the convenience of not leaving your house, or in my case, driving across town and realizing you forgot your guitar picks and having to drive to the nearest guitar center while Chad tries to tell you about their cool new China imported house line of guitars. I digress. The downside is this just doesn't feel like a band practice. Don't get me wrong, it certainly has its place, and I think it's an amazing tool if you have a member who lives 500 miles away but still wants to be a part of every band practice or if just being able to collaborate and write with other people in real time is your goal it's a really excellent tool for that just don't expect this to completely replace the experience of having a full band practice where all of you are in the same room at least until they have support for the metaverse 
But all of that aside, I think what Elk Live has done here is really, really impressive. And I wouldn't be surprised if you saw LAN connections on other audio interfaces from other manufacturers going forward. The global trend seems to be geared towards being able to do things from home. And I think with that in mind, Elk Live is ahead of the curve. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, please let me know by hitting the like button and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.